when you say you're ready for expansion, when you say you're ready to play a bigger game, guess what? The universe is probably gonna test you. And I want you to be prepared for this because part of playing a bigger game is letting the go of what is limiting you and making you play a small game. The Mindspo Podcast. What do you see with your mind's eye? Welcome back. Let's elevate. Roll your shoulders up and back. Unclench your jaw. Elongate your spine as you take a deep breath in. And now, exhale. Now take your mind to that person, place, or thing that you have gratitude for and start to feel into the joy available to you at all times. Elevate into a higher vibration as we expand together and dive into this conversation. I'm your host, Rochelle Fox, and welcome to the Mindspo Manifestation Series brought to you by Manifesty App. Today, we are diving into a topic that oh, I think is very, very important when it comes to manifesting. And especially if you're at the start of your manifestation journey, or if you are really thinking about something big in the future that you want, this is a mindset and a piece of awareness that has served me in such a big way. And I wanted to bring on the other co-founder of Mindspo and Manifesty app, Chris Soul, to speak about this one, because this is something that we really kind of discovered together. And it was something we had a conversation around, around 10 years ago, that was really, you know, kind of pivotal in our journey of goal setting and going after our dreams. And that is this idea that we had decided and we have decided and we have continued to decide that we are choosing to live a big life. And living a big life, it's a decision. It's not just something that happens. Like you actually have to decide if you want to live a big life because you don't have to, do you? No, not at all. It's a, it's, it's, it's a decision. It's an attitude. It's a, a realization of a potential, a mm. potential reality. I think when you start learning about manifestation, your mind starts to wander a little bit into like, whoa, well, if, if anything is possible, then what do I want to bring into possibility, right? And I think when you do that, you immediately start to notice how many potential handbrakes there are on your own, you know, your own inner limitations, your, your limiting belief systems, the, the pushback you might also experience in your environment if you begin to verbalize that like, wow, well, maybe I can do this, maybe I'll do that, maybe I'll buy a giant house one day and move to some other country. You may start to notice that there are these, these limiting factors inside and on the outside and you know, to, to move beyond those, to really realize all that is possible for you, it requires a little bit of work. It requires a little bit of tinkering with your own mind, with your environment, with your habits, with the things that are coming out of your mouth, with the things that you are entertaining inside of your head. And yeah, I think for us, it was a very pivotal moment, you know, 10, 10 odd years ago, where we really started to feel like, okay, if I'm not the limiting stories inside of my head, realizing that thanks to meditation. And if anything is truly possible for us, because we are these, you know, multi-dimensional infinite beings that come here as humans in this time and space, then it's a decision you have to make. It's a decision to, to be different, mm. to, to change your path. I think for me, it's a decision to play a bigger game. Yeah. And I think the thing that really was a pivotal moment for us that I want to get into today is we were very fearful at the beginning of our journey. We had all these dreams, these ideas, these kind of bits of intuition from the universe like, oh, you could do this. Oh, you could live location free. Oh, you don't have to have a nine to five job. Oh, you don't even have to live in Sydney anymore. Oh, you can start a business on the internet. Oh, you can become a meditation teacher. You can start retreats. Like we had all this intuition throughout our journey. But at the same time that we had this intuition, we also had fear. We had this voice of fear, this primal fear inside of us telling us like, that's scary, that's dangerous. You know, you could fail, you could fuck up, things could go wrong. Look at this person, you could end up like this. There was this energy of fear. And the thing that we really did was we actually had a conversation about like, what's the worst that could happen? 
And I think that this is something that I really want you to ask yourself today. What is the worst thing that could happen? So think about your big dream. Think about the thing that you would like to do in your life, that big manifestation, that goal, that big scary thing that makes you want to shit yourself, literally. And go, what's the worst that could happen if I failed that? And really play around with that. And here's the thing. So many people live their whole entire life not actually really deconstructing the worst case scenario. And you might be listening to this being like, "Uh, I thought I was listening to a manifestation podcast. Like, why are they talking about visualizing the worst case scenario? And here's the thing, people have been lying to you. You actually need to think about the worst case scenario and go to that worst case scenario place in order to stop being fearful of it. Because if you are just thinking about it and you're just seeing it as this huge, big, scary thing where you literally die and it's horrible and everyone laughs at you, you have dramatized this thing in your head and you actually haven't got any perspective on it. And that's the thing that I feel we really came to the understanding of that The worst case scenario, failure, it's actually not death. And here's the thing, our bodies, our minds were lying to us, making us feel that if we failed, if we fucked up, if it didn't work out, that we were going to die. Let's talk about that. When you, exactly, when you don't investigate the, the true reality and you actually spend a little bit of time to actually really deconstruct it, if you just notice the feeling of resistance mm-hmm. the the feeling of potential stress and anxiety in your body you will you know you will not pursue certain things in your life because you you think it's actually dangerous so mm-hmm. you'll think about you know starting a business and maybe leaving your current career up, and you you have this calling in your intuition you're like i i want to start this thing but you're scared You're scared to stand out. You're scared to, you know, leave the safety and security of of some company's paycheck. And if you don't actually spend the time to think, well, you know, what is the actual worst case scenario? Well, the worst case scenario is you might have to get another job if it fails. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or if you can't get another job immediately, then you might have to sleep on your parents' couch or maybe even in the room that you grew up in or maybe at your friend's place or, you know, some somewhere like that. And you realize that the repercussions in most cases, and I'm not saying all cases, of but course. most cases. Never speak in absolute. Exactly. Absolutes. In most cases, it's nowhere near as intense as the mind will make it out to be because we have this consciousness that is focused on safety. So your mind, if you have shelter and some regular food, uh, a basic income and maybe some friends and maybe even a romantic partner, your cave person brain will literally tell you and signal to you that you've already achieved so much why would you risk any of this my god do not do not dare you know and then this is where we have these sayings in culture like you know life begins at the end of your comfort zone Mm. because you actually have to step into this feeling of discomfort and a great thing here is to use your visualization ability to not even have to step into it but just step into it in your mind and really ask yourself well, what is the absolute worst case you know the old stoic philosophers i think it was seneca the younger he you know he talked about practicing poverty because if you went and you spent a day a month or once a year or something actually going homeless for a day or two you would realize that the reality of not having a home for a day or two and having to find a way to get food is is not the same thing as death but your brain will pretend as if it is it'll stop you from pursuing certain things because it'll be like my god that would be so horrible as if your life will end mm. but it generally doesn't and it's about expanding your comfort zone. And, you know, the other thing I want to say here is, is that we live in such an interesting time on this planet right now. I mean, you, we could have been born at any time in history. And if you prescribe to reincarnation, you know, then you would believe that you have lived many times. I believe I've been here many, many times. I wasn't Chris, though, so I don't have any direct conscious memory of it. But I believe that people, you know, they leave and they come again and they leave and they come again, which explains why you have children who remember past lives for the first five years, as well as, you know, there's many other little artifacts that point to that reality. Now, if you prescribe to that or not, either way, you could have been alive at any other time in history. And what would that life have been like? 
I'm not saying it would have been horrible, but what I will say is that having food in corner stores 24-7 within a five-minute walk from you, that's a that's a pretty amazing thing for a caveman, you know? A caveman would be like, you, you have what, you know? To have insurance and to have medical practices, to have doctors who understand, you know, germ theory, to have savings accounts and compound interest and to have social media where you could just message and say, hey guys, I'm, I'm in trouble. Can somebody help me? And someone, you know, I need to go somewhere and an Uber pulls up. Like we live in the most incredible, safe time on this planet. There has never been a better time to go after your dreams and to just take a punt mm. and see if it's possible. There has never been a bigger safety net, you know? So if not now, then, then when? Yeah. And, and this is such an insane time to be alive, to have been born into that you can manifest so much more powerfully than ever before. Um, so, you know, why not just give it a shot? And I think that's the thing most people don't even explore what would happen if they fail. They yeah. they have failure as this huge, big, scary, unknown, fearful kind of ball in front of them that they don't even explore. It's like, oh, that would be so scary. Oh, that would be so terrifying. Stop. If you feel that way, ask why. What are you terrified of? What are you scared of? What is the actual thing that is at the base of that fear? Start to understand your fears and get intimate with them because otherwise your fears are always these like big scary monsters in the closet that you never look at and you're just constantly avoiding this closet that actually could be the door to fucking Narnia. Like, you know, you could actually open that closet and be like, holy shit, there's a whole nother world in here, but I was just too scared to look. And I, I think that for me was looking into that closet, going into Narnia that I thought was the big, scary, horrible closet where all death and pain and horrible and failure and being laughed at would happen. It actually ended up being this magical, expansive place. And the thing that I've learned through playing a bigger game and learning to step into a bigger game is the universe meets you where you're at. So if you are not even saying that you're interested in a bigger game, if you are always resisting and playing small, then guess what? You're going to get what you are because the universe is like, mm, that one, mm, not ready. It overloads their nervous system too much. And that's also something that I've really learned with playing a bigger game is that if you want to achieve these things, you've got to get used to feeling uncomfortable. You've got to get used to regulating yourself, feeling calmer in bigger situations and putting yourself through these tests and tribulations. Because one thing I've learned is, guess what? You don't fail. You only ever get feedback. So yeah, it is failure. But actually, no, it's feedback. You are constantly learning and growing and evolving and taking all these things in. And then you'll be like, oh, that didn't work. Oh, I learned this thing about myself. Oh, there's that thing about myself. Like You're constantly building on who you are, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And we have failed so many fucking times. It's, it's so funny when you really go into that and you realize that we don't actually have another word in the English language for failure. Is like, there a German word for it? Because you always come up with like a German word and it's no, just... I th no, I don't think in German... I mean, no. And I, I think a lot of Germans are very, very scared of failure yeah. and standing out in that culture, I think more so than say in America or even Australia. It's so funny when you realize what a negative connotation that word has. Like I tried something and I failed. But when you really zoom out, the difference between a success and somebody who doesn't reach success is that the person who has the success generally has failed more times than the other person tried. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you failed. It's just you found one more thing that wasn't it. But in that, you actually took a step forward. You're failing forward. And, you know, it's, it's something that I remind myself of very often is how we have such a fear of being seen as humans. Oh my gosh, we're, this one's we're, huge. We have the biggest fear of standing out, oh. right? And I, I got very curious about why that is. And I have my theory based off of, you know, some things that I learned along the way. The main thing being that once again, so many things you'll hear me talk about in this podcast relay back to understanding that you are biologically a caveman, right? A cave person. Your body is 200,000 years old in how it functions. What was life like 200,000 years ago? If you can figure that out, if you can think more about what life was like back then, you will understand yourself more in this day and age. And the biggest thing was, is that we were hunter-gatherers. Mm. So we lived in small groups, about 150 people, and your life depended on the group. 
if that group of 150 people decided one day to disprove of you, they just suddenly don't like you anymore. They create a little club where you're excluded and they all start chanting, get out, get out. That is the same thing as death because you are not actually this romanticized version of like the single hunter up in the cave somewhere with a sharp stick and you know we find his remains probably in most cases when they find like a single individual in some cave they were probably ostracized from a, a tribe and then who knows how long they managed to live there before they died maybe it was a month maybe it was less maybe it was a year i don't know but either way the brain equates standing out and everybody being like boo as death Right. Which is why when they ask people what are their greatest fears and they give you a list, you know, a shark attack and volcano and something, people put public speaking right up the top, mm. quite often above things that have a very, very high chance of you actually dying. So they're more scared of that, which when you think about it is, is, is wild. You know, in this day and age, if you're willing to stand out, dress kind of crazy and say crass things on social media you are more likely to accumulate resources that will help you survive so it, things are completely upside down and yeah, back to, back front, to now, front you know and so if you're not going to give yourself permission now to pursue your dreams in 2023 on planet earth like there has never been a better time mm -hmm. and you know realize that it's going to feel uncomfortable and just lean into it anyway something that you and me we we came up with a long time ago. I don't know where we picked this up, but it's it's realizing that I know what will happen if I don't do it. Mm. I know what will happen if I don't do it. Yes. But I don't know what will happen if I do do it. Yeah. And, and having a value on the unknown, yes. realizing that this, this life as a human being is such a gift, is such an incredible time to be here. And, you know, if nature gifted me this ability to be here with this consciousness in this body, in this time, then like, how do I honor that? Well, I think I honor that by, by seeing how I, I can push this, seeing what's possible, seeing how I can expand by following my intuition and not just being held back by, you know, culture and dogma, you know, other people's thinkings, other people's limitations. And look, if the people around you are holding you back, if you notice that you shining brighter makes other people uncomfortable, then like just accept that that's a part of it mm -hmm. and, and forgive them and accept them, accept their non-acceptance of you and just do it anyway. I got to say that awareness of I know what will happen if I don't do it, but I don't know what will happen if I do. That has really expanded us in such a big way. And like, look, right now we're recording this in Sydney and that awareness was actually the thing that made us go to Bali in the first place. And it's now the awareness that's made us leave Bali and come to Sydney because we know what life in Bali is like. Mm. We've been doing that for five years. So some people, that's their big dream. That's their big, scary, big picture dream to go out and be nomadic and go live on a tropical island. And that was our huge big picture dream for many years. We did that. We achieved that. We lived that. We embraced it, had the most amazing chapters of our lives but now we're like hmm this just feels normal this feels safe this feels so like limited for us and now we're in this thing of like oh what would happen if we move to America or if we move to Australia or if we move to Sydney or the Gold Coast and we're constantly playing with this idea of like oh I don't know what would happen it could be so exciting and I think being in that awareness and that invitation for the excitement of the universe the unknown I also feel that how you play a bigger game is that you get curious and really just being like universe this or something better I love saying that like literally the other day I put something on my Instagram and I wrote out a manifestation which is us coming back and living here in October November and staying here for five months and I wrote down this manifestation put out the universe and was like you know what this or something better because if you you get into this habit of like, I, I'm calling in this, I'm ready for this or something better. And you just kind of release control, that surrendering and excitement. And like, I'm ready for expansion. And that's a crazy thing. The one last thing I want to say on this is when you say you're ready for expansion, when you say you're ready to play a bigger game, guess what? The universe is probably going to test you. And I want you to be prepared for this because part of playing a bigger game is letting the fuck go of what is limiting you and making you play a small game. So you got to get ready for the universe to take you on a ride. But guess what? It's a fucking roller coaster. So this is going to be some wild ride shit and you're going to get off that and you're going to be standing on your two feet. And you're going to be like, whoo, wow, I'm so happy I did that. But you sometimes it when you do this, it feels like you're literally upside down in the ring on the roller coaster being like, what is going on? Why am I doing this? But then you get off and you're like, that was amazing. I want to do it again. And I think that normalization of 
it's going to be testing. There are going to be challenges that come my way and just accepting that. And even for me, whenever I step into playing a bigger game, I'm like, I- I'm ready, babe. I'm-, I'm ready for what happens next. I'll never forget one of my words for the, the year that like everything kind of fell apart on the pandemic was expansion. Mm. And it was before I could experience expansion in my life, there was so much constriction, constriction financially, mentally, physically, relationship, everything felt like it constricted, like you wouldn't believe. And through all of that constriction, it got so tight that eventually I felt like we went super sane and expanded in the biggest way possible. And then we gave birth to so many more things, but it was from that constriction that the expansion happened. So you've got to get ready for this kind of roller coaster start of acceptance of what this means and playing a bigger game means that things get really fucking interesting i i just had a few downloads just coming through while i was listening to you that was, that was so good i think you know for one in like hindu mythology mm-hmm. there is this thing of like the four ages that time moves through and oh. i and the final stage is the kali yuga mm-hmm. where you know the the goddess of death Kali dances the world into destruction because the destruction has to happen in order for something new to come about again. You know, it's like a, a lightning strike causing a bushfire and then suddenly it all this life sprouts out from the ashes. Mm-hmm. So that's one. The other thing was, I remember a, a perfect story of how the universe tested us once. And you, you remember this. When there came a time, I think it was 2014, 2013, where we shifted our focus from you know, I was a graphic designer selling my time and we wanted Mm. to create a business that could also do business while I was asleep so that it could scale without me necessarily. And so we started an e-commerce brand, but I remember there was this one day because I was doing freelance graphic design gigs and I was, I was getting probably one or two graphic design gig offers per week on average. That's how it averaged out. And I remember one day I was like, I woke up, I I woke up and I said, you know what, this is, I have to draw a line in the sand Mm. and I have to make the jump. There has to be a leap and I said okay you know what from today I am no longer taking on freelance work I'm only letting whatever I have fizzle out now because I'm fully dedicating everything to the e-commerce brand that day oh my god I had five new projects come through in my email inbox no big two two from friends one was a a music festival overseas that was going to be like three months of designing all of their branding like it was a big thing they were five in one day that never happened ever not remotely so like the universe prepare yourself for the universe to shit test you to see how dedicated you are i ended up saying no to three of those then i said the two from friends i said i did i would do i finished one of them the other one i gave his money back and i said sorry boss i can't finish this one and and that was that was that, that was, was it that was that leaving moment. leaving you know the gravity of the previous life the inertia of the previous mm-hmm. life so prepare yourself for there to be a leap moment generally Mm. Uh, and then the the other thing i just wanted to say as well is you know you might be listening right now and you might have a life that's already very structured you might you know maybe you are maybe you're a parent maybe you are you know 10 years down the road of a a, an amazing career that's growing and i just want to highlight the fact that you know traveling physically around the planet or making some humongous shift is not necessarily what's needed in this you know like a a big life could be as simple as you know like i wonder what would happen if i decide to join this club and learn this new hobby Mm -hmm. and master this new skill or start reading like 10 books on some topic You, you never know like it doesn't have to be a humongous thing it can often you know compound interest is the the biggest thing of all i think the thing i'd say there is never compare what someone else says is their big life to what you think your big life is like your big life is your big life like you get to decide what a big life is to you exactly just like you get to decide what success is for you and i i I think one of the best things you can do if you're someone that listens to podcasts or reads personal development books or you know goes on these sorts of journeys like we love talking about remind yourself all the time that I get to decide what big is for me. I get to decide what success is for me. And don't like listen to someone else and go like, oh, well, my big life seems really small now. No, maybe that is your big life. And that's okay. That's your big life. And I think that it's so important to have that awareness because otherwise we can minimize ourselves and feel like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm I'm like living this shit life. It's like, no, you're living your version of a big life that's in line with your dharma. And somebody else is looking at what you think is not a big life being like, wow, that person 
person's life is so big compared to mine. So exactly. And don't compare yourself to someone else. I think, I think the biggest thing is just learning to like live in the question, you know, becoming curious by Mm. nature and, and developing a sense of awe that doesn't need to be described in words. Because I think the people who live the, you know, subjectively smallest lives are the ones who have just kind of put themselves in little ideological boxes. You know, they say, well, I'm like this, so therefore I have this. And they're not zooming out enough to realize that, you know, you're on a spinning rock, like spinning around a giant ball of fire that never goes out while that ball of fire is spinning around something else. Like if you just literally just zoom out in that way, Mm -hmm. you realize how ridiculous existence actually is and how magical nature is. Like look at an acorn and realize that that thing turns into a giant oak that can live for a thousand years. Like where's it getting this power from? Well, it's getting the power from the same place that you are. You are tapped into the exact same thing. We walk around and we think that we're these separate beings from reality. We're like, we, we talk about having encounters with reality as if we're separate from it. We're like, well, I'm this individual, you know, I'm just Chris, this person who's German, who's a man, who's this, like all these labels. But at the end of the day, you're just a little finger that's sprouting out of a hand like everyone else. We are, we are all connected underneath mm-hmm. and you are one and the same with this entire process that's been going on for billions of years you know you are it for a lack of a better word yeah and i think when you just start to embrace that more the understanding that you know the more you learn the less you know and you can never know you can never truly know you know the question what is the meaning of life can never be answered in english words Mm. and i think the more i found the more that i could lean into that being okay with not knowing the, the more it enables you to step into that feeling of discomfort and see what's waiting for you on the other side. Yeah, so your action step today, what you can do to make this practical is literally ask yourself, what is my big life? What is it? And why am I scared of this? What is the, what is that big scary thing? And really go into the fear, start to look at it and start to deconstruct it and, you know, face it so you can become less scared of it. Because if you just look at it as some big scary thing and you don't actually understand it, then you're always going to be pushing it in front of yourself. So go meet your dragons, go meet your demons, go hang out with them, see that they're not as scary as what you think. And then you are going to feel safer. Your nervous system is going to feel more relaxed to be able to step into that big picture dream, whatever that may be for you. So Sol wants to leave you with a bit of a quote, which I think is a really beautiful one. Yeah, I read this wonderful quote a long time ago and I found it just the other day again. This is by Terence McKenna, the famous psychonaut. And he said, nature loves courage. You make the commitment and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under. It will lift you up. This is the trick. This is what all these teachers and philosophers who really counted, who really touched the alchemical gold, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done. By hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed. Mm. Beautiful. Oof. Gives me goosebumps every time I read that. Amazing. Oh, I love that. Baby, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. My absolute pleasure. If you have enjoyed this conversation and you want to dream a big dream, don't forget to go and download Manifesty app, our app who sponsors these podcasts and makes them possible. Go and download Manifesty and start picturing your big dream. Make a vision board movie. Bring your dream to life. Go do our manifestation meditation. Set affirmation reminders. You start moving towards that big dream by imprinting it in your mind every single day. We literally created code and software for you to be able to do that this is what we have been using to really you know create the the life of our dreams and it's our hope and intention that we can help and support you in creating the life of your dreams as well we'll see you in the next one until then we're sending you so much love Thank you for joining me for this episode. You can discover more from Mindspo on Instagram and TikTok by following at Mindspo and myself at Rochelle underscore Fox. If this episode inspired you, then please pass it on and share the love. And if you're new to our world and you want to elevate your mind and step into your best self, then be sure to download our app Manifesty from the App Store and take advantage of the free trial. With Manifesty, you can create your own vision board movies, practice powerful meditations and set affirmation reminders so your phone supports your journey towards that abundant vision of your future. And lastly, always remember... 
you create your own reality. So go and make some magic. 